Godot is a fairly new game engine. It's growing fast, but compared to commercial engines like Unity or Unreal, it lacks a lot of features. So, can I build a ray tracer in Godot? In version 4, compute shaders were added to Godot, which lets us run code directly on the GPU. A CPU does things one at a time, step by step, but GPUs handle thousands of calculations in parallel, so it's very fast. Still not fast enough to run Minecraft with shaders. Wow, it's just like real life, man. What the? Compute shaders are still very new in Godot, meaning you, the developer, are responsible for managing the shader at the API level. In simple terms, if you write a shader in Godot and in Unity, the Godot version will need a lot more code, and small changes to your code can break the entire thing. Luckily, a YouTuber named Ace Roller created a Godot script that handles compute shaders for you. Also, check out Ace Roller's video if you want more details. But first, let's get a basic understanding of ray tracing. Ray tracing is a way to simulate how light bounces around a scene. Imagine a light bulb. Light rays shoot outwards from it and bounces around. Some of those rays eventually reaches your eye. And that's how you see. But most of these rays don't reach your eye, so calculating them would be a huge waste of performance. So instead we will shoot rays from the camera. This will give us the same result but better performance. Let's now jump into Godot. I can create this A compute object. Then I could assign a texture to it. After that I dispatch the compute shader and show the texture. To test it, in my compute shader, I have created a simple gradient, then added some noise to it. I then modified the A compute script to add support for includes, so that I don't have everything in one single file and I can avoid a big mess. In my shader, I can add this include statement and move my code into a separate file. Now for ray tracing, by doing some math, I can figure out if a ray has hit a sphere or not. And if it does, we can set the current pixel's color to a sphere color, otherwise a blue color for the sky. At that moment, I switched to a plugin in Godot for managing my compute shader because it allowed me to use struct in shader. Now I can write much cleaner code. Now for the lighting, I can get its normal vector, which basically means if you're standing on a surface, which way is up. For a sphere, the normals will point away from it. Let's fake some lighting for now using the dot product. Let's say we have a normal and a light direction. If the normal is pointing in the light direction, the dot product will give us a value of 1, meaning the maximum brightness. But as the normal points away from the light direction, the value decreases, all the way to negative 1 when light direction is opposite to the normal. This code does exactly that. It takes the dot product of the light direction and the normal. This max function makes sure that the value never goes below 0. Since I'm using Godot, I can use its camera matrix and I don't have to do all that matrix math myself. I have a camera and a placeholder sphere. In Godot, I can add basic movement to the camera. And now we can move in our ray tracer. If I change the camera's property like the FOV, in the ray tracer, you can see it's the same as the preview that's shown in Godot. Then I went on a vacation which lasted more than a month. When I came back and looked at my code, uh, I think I've discovered a new language. After spending an unhealthy amount of time reading my own code, I tried to add multiple spheres. Oh, uh, this isn't right. I feel like I'm on drugs. 
it's fine from behind, but from front it's interesting. Anyways, I fixed it and now I can have as many spheres as I want. For the sky, I can blend between a blue and a white color. Now let's just try to run it. What could possibly go wrong? But this isn't realistic. It's because we're faking the lighting. What we need to do is send out multiple rays that bounce off. I tried to fix it, but somehow it's even worse. Now you can see the reflections here. Yeah, there you go, we got some reflections here. I have also added IMGUI to control the scene. Now the problem with this approach is that it reflects light perfectly. In the real world, light is never reflected perfectly. There are tiny imperfections in all surfaces which makes light bounce in random directions. If the surface is smooth, light is reflected perfectly like a mirror, which is what we have right now. What I need to do is bounce the light in random directions. Now if you see this looks much better, there's a lot of noise but we'll get rid of it later. Here you can see the green light from the ground is reflected on the sphere. And by this roughness value I can calculate how much light it scatters. Here the lighting model I was using was incorrect. I was adding color but in reality objects will absorb color not add color. If I remove all colors you can see that it looks pretty realistic. The space below the sphere is dark because less light will reach the space. Now to get rid of the noise I have to do progressive rendering. Meaning I'll use the previous image's data to generate the new image. But with a random seed. So this way in the first frame the light will travel in one direction and in the other frame it will travel in some different direction. This gets rid of the noise because in real life light comes from everywhere not just one direction. And as the time goes on, the image will get more clear. Along the edges, there is a hard transition. I can get rid of it by modifying the camera's position. If I offset the camera's origin randomly every frame, this will blur the image a little bit. I've also added emission so objects can actually emit light. There's still a lot to do but I have a horror game to finish and I haven't uploaded in a while. So maybe I'll revisit this sometimes in the future. For now, goodbye.